Council to meet and is deemed open to the public if indeed the meeting is streamed live on the internet, which it is. In the spirit of reconciliation, before we begin this meeting, I acknowledge the peoples of the Kulin Nation as the traditional owners on the land on which Wyndham is being built, and we pay our respects to Elders past and present. I'll now proceed to read out the opening prayer and welcome. We pray for guidance in the Council's decision making to achieve the best outcome for the people of Wyndham also like to acknowledge councillors and staff that are in attendance this evening. We'll move to the next item, uh, item number two, apologies and requests for leave. Madam CEO, do we have any apologies or requests for leave this evening? Thank you, Mr Mayor. We have apologies this evening from Councillor Henry Barlow and Councillor uh, Tony Hooper. Mr Mayor, I'd also like to take this opportunity to remind councillors that we are currently in the election period and that you are not permitted to use this meeting as a form of electioneering purposes. So just for the record, Mr Mayor, I just needed to be clear about that for the audience here this evening also. Thank you. Understood. Thank you, Madam CEO. Uh, I'll note those apologies and we'll proceed with the next item. Item number three, declaration by councillors of disclosure of conflict of interest and or conflicting personal interest in any items of the agenda. Councillors, are there any conflicts of interest that anyone needs to declare this evening? No, there being none. No, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. There being none, we'll proceed to the next item. Item number four, confirmation of the minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, the motion is that the minutes of the council meetings held on Tuesday, the 15th of September 2020, as prepared and circulated, be confirmed. Can I get a mover for the item, please? Councillor Shaw and Councillor Khan. Seconder. Uh, Councillor Shaw, do you wish to speak to it? No, Mr Mayor. No. Councillor Khan? Uh, no, Mr Mayor, it's just straightforward. Okay. And, uh, Excellent. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, with that in mind, we'll now proceed to a vote. And as has occurred due to life, um, the online process, I'll now read through everybody uh, and uh, get everybody's votes. So with that in mind, I'll start with uh, Councillor Khan. In favour. Councillor Ahn. In favour. Thank you. Councillor Villa Gonzalo. In favour. Councillor, I'm also in favour. Councillor Shaw. In favour. 
Councillor Marcus. In favour. Councillor uh, Maynard. Four. Okay, thank you everyone for that. We'll now proceed to the next item five, deputations and presentations. There are nil. Item number six, officers report 6.1 petitions. Madam CEO, I understand there has been a petition lodged for this evening. Thanks, Mr Mayor. That is correct. Um, on the 12th of October, Council received a petition signed by 571 people addressed to Wyndham City Council. Of those 571 signatures, 131 filled the criteria as outlined in Council's Governance Rule, Rule 7, and 440 signatures did not meet this rule. So that's just a bit of a, a context setting um, for this particular item, Mr Mayor. Um, the petition states the pop-up uh, city parklets on Watton Street, Werribee, have taken up 16 car park spaces and are affecting accessibility of consumers and the public to local small business. Uh, local businesses are already challenged by the current COVID-19 pandemic. The limited parking availability to consumers supporting these businesses have further impact local businesses in an adverse manner. The loss of 16 car park spaces have added to the current difficulty for the consumers in Werribee to secure parking on Watton Street. So uh, social gatherings in the pop-up parklets is deemed inappropriate amid the current spike of coronavirus. Additionally, within the first two weeks of the parklets set up and prior to the current lockdown restrictions, it has been observed that the parklets have been sparingly utilised by the public and therefore create a wastage to parking spaces. Uh, we request that Wyndham City Council uninstall the pop-up parklets so that 16 car park spaces can be made available again to the public to support consumers and local businesses. And councillors, as you're aware, we've already discussed a range of these matters and uh, Wyndham City Council notes the petition and will prepare a report to respond uh, for the council meeting on the 8th of December 2020. So thank you, Mr Mayor, for that. Thank you very much, Madam CEO. Councillor Khan, do you have a point of clarification? What are you seeking to do? Um, just, 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 just saying that I'm moving the oh, petition. Okay, it's just noted for the purpose of the meeting. So thanks for that. Excellent. All right, we'll uh, proceed to item 6.2, the strategic report. Neil, need a second. No, we don't need to vote on it. It's only for noting purposes. Okay. There's no formal resolution. Uh, 6.2, strategic reports, nil. 6.3, uh, policy and advocacy again, nil. 6.4, strategic and town planning, nil. 6.5, the other reports, which relates to the financial report for this year ended 30th of June 2020. The report is on pages 7 to 13, recommendation on page 8, and the attachments on 14 to 89. Councillor Maynard is the mover. Councillor Khan is the seconder. Councillor Maynard, do you wish to speak to the item? I do, Mr Mayor. Yeah, five um, minutes, thanks. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, and certainly in moving this motion, uh, which relates to the financial statement uh, for 2019-20, which I support, the statements have been prepared in accordance with accounting standards and all other statutory and regulatory requirements. They have been provided to the Victorian Order of the General's Office for their review and sign-off. Uh, I was in attendance at the Audit and Risk Management Committee meeting held on the 7th of October as a representative and the Audit and Risk uh, Management <coughs> uh, Committee reviewed and discussed the statements with the external auditors and recommend that Council authorise the certification of the statements. A few things I would like to highlight in relation to uh, the results. Council has achieved an operating surplus of uh, $293 million in the 1920 uh, budget. Whilst this is a strong result, it is important to note that this includes amounts that Council has received from uh, developer contributions, as well as uh, one-off or non-recurring grants. Uh, the de developer comp contributions or DCs, as we refer to them, are made up uh, either in cash or in the form of assets that are transferred to Council. It is important to stress that these developer contributions come with future financial obligations on council to build infrastructure and provide for the ongoing maintenance of assets. Oh, excuse me. Um, the in uh, looking at our results, it is important to focus on the adjusted underlying result, which includes the core income and expense categories 
of council services and operations. That means that it excludes developer contributions as well as other capital grant grants revenue, I should say. The adjusted underlying result reflects a deficit of $11.5 million compared to a surplus of $9.3 million in 2018-19. The decline in 2019-20 was due to a number of factors, including depreciation on council's growing asset base and higher material and service, uh, services expenses. COVID-19 has had an impact on the financial incomes and council facilities, such as a landfill, Aquapulse and Eagle Stadium, the Civic Centre and Community Centres and libraries were either closed or operated at a reduced capacity in line with government directives. These closures and related restrictions coupled with the council initiatives to support the community through the Win Local Initiative have impacted both through reduction in revenue and increasing costs. Council's overall net asset base has increased by $293.3 million in the 1920 budget, including $78 million, a $78 million increase in the cash holding. As per my earlier comment regarding developer contributions, it is important to note that a significant portion of the funds are held for future community infrastructure and other capital works projects. And finally, Mr Mayor, our council has achieved a strong delivery of our planned capital works uh, with a program of uh, totaling of $117.6 million in 1920. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Maynard, for that contribution. Uh, is there any other speakers that wish to speak to the item? Councillor Khan, you have three minutes. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. Look, I'd just like to echo that to the figure $661.5 million is a figure entire revenue or income we received um, first of the first uh, in entire year from 1st July 2019 to 30 June 2020. And that obviously have number of areas that how the money come through. Obviously rate in charges, which is $219.2 million. So it's good to see that we know we got, we got $219.2 million from the rate in charges. Can I also make a comment here we did receive for non-monetary contribution, which is a $221.6 million and, and also user fees, which is $60.9 million. Now, good to see that we have received a grant, which is less than 10% of entire revenue income received from different sources, was $54.5 million grant. That includes a, a Mr. Mayor grant from the state government and federal government or other than a income source of the Wyndham City Council. Now, we, yes, we did acknowledge that we also got money as statutory fees and fines, which is 18.2. But it's good to see that, Mr. Mayor, it is one of the Victorias, uh, not the, the largest one of the one, but one of the, a great council having a strong income. It's important to note that it's strong income and we have a, a, a comparably a more great expenses, such as in salaries, an associate cost is 152.3 million. So if you work out the Mr. Mayor, the number is is a revenue if it's a 661.5 million and expenses are 152.3 in salaries and associate cost is 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 what uh, industry industry is not something we giving a lot of money and uh, spending the cost and, and, and trying to uh, not minimize the proper uh, expenses. But also, Mr. Mayor, good to see the depreciation is a hundred. $19.6 million depreciation that goes because we did receive a lot of revenue here is is also, as you know, we have a lot of assets and then the assets, uh, of course, against the assets, the depreciation has been done. And this figure, Mr. Mayor, is also have income received prior to the COVID-19 from the Western Leisure Centre, which is our um, the Leisure Centre, Western Leisure Centre. So that income is just not that great in charge it received from. Well, I like to say that, you know, it's, it's a great result for the officers and entire staff and councillors who have worked an entire year to achieve a surplus budget, which is $293.3 million. And that is, I look forward, if that can continue. But we know that, however, uh, 
everyone have been infected, we've been infected, so COVID-19 will uh, have this uh, figure differently in, in next year, but definitely receiving the strong budget right. and surplus is uh, something we're proud and we, we wish now that, uh, uh, that uh, in terms of that, and, and I did echo that now, Council may not have mentioned that is $11.5 million is Got another 10 problem. seconds you'll have to wrap up after that, Councillor Khan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I look forward to seeing that in a positive uh, continue in near future. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Khan. Councillor Marcus, you have three minutes. Thank, Thank you very much. I would like to begin by thanking all of those who contributed to delivering the Council agenda this year. Council staff, our community and business members, our, our Council portfolio committees and the District Advisory Committees. We have delivered progress on all council priorities and continue to plan for the future growth of Wyndham and our response to the COVID-19 pandemic. This year, we've built upon our solid foundations and have positioned council to make a lasting difference. So Wyndham continues to be livable, a great community, a real place for people. And uh, I, I would just like to highlight um, a couple of the highlights. Um, this year, again, we funded many infrastructure progress uh, projects. Council spent $117.6 million to improve roads, footpaths and cycleways, community facilities, parks, open spaces and playgrounds. Council managed over $4.1 billion of fixed assets to deliver up to 70 different community-facing services, which I think is absolutely fantastic. In 1920, we have given Two billion worth of grants to 285 local businesses and have waived more than one million in fees and charges. There will, of course, be more to do to support business and our community in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, just a couple of uh, projects that we all worked on, and I want to emphasise that it has been a team. Uh, and the two that I would like to call out would be the Wyndham Coastal and Marine Management Plan, which was adopted by Council in June 20. This plan was developed in partnership with, again with the community, providing a framework for improved access and development of the Wyndham coastline with sustainable land management practices to ensure our sea, our marine environment and natural vegetation is predicted, is predicted further. What I would like to say in closing is the impacts of COVID-19 pandemic have had a huge effect and there will be bigger impacts to come. And this is where, uh, because Wyndham has been harder hit than any others, we've got the highest mortgage rate, so there will be a lot of work to do in the future. Uh, and I think this is something that we will have to look at. Um, we've, got, we've got through the last financial budget well, but the 2021 financial budget, according to all economists, is going to be very, very difficult. And I think this is where the new council that will be elected will need to sit down with council and review everything in December because there's hard times ahead. I'm worried for the business people. I'm worried for the landlords. Um, I'm worried for people that have invested in offices because they're not going to be taken up. So there is a big, big lot of work to do for the future during because of the COVID. Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Marcus. Okay, are there any other speakers uh, before I proceed to a vote? Doesn't look like there are. All right, uh, we'll proceed to a uh, vote uh, now. So, uh, Councillor Arne, you're first. Are you voting? Which way are you voting? Four. Thank you. Councillor Khan? In favour. Thank you. Councillor Villa-Gonzalo? Four. Councillor, uh, oh, I'm in favour. <laughs> Councillor Shaw? Four, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Marcus? In favour. And Councillor Maynard? Four. Terrific. Thank you. Okay, that, that item is now passed. Items 7, 8 and 9, there are nil uh, in relation to those on the agenda. Item 10, questions with notice from the public gallery. Madam CEO, do we have any questions? Thank you, Mr Mayor. This evening we do have nil uh, questions, so we'll move on from that item. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Madam CEO. Items 11, 12 and 13, uh, no longer required either because they are nil. Uh, and Mr. Mayor, have we missed an item? We have, 6. yeah. 6. 4. 4. 4. What I'll do is I'll the go back. Report. 
Oh, have indeed. 6.5.2. We'll jump to 6.5.2. Sorry, everyone. Uh, of the reports on page 90 to 93, re recommendation on 91, the attachment on 94 to 161. The perils of not having this printed out. All right. Uh, I will second move it. Thank you, Councillor Maynard. Councillor Khan will second it. Councillor Maynard, do you wish to speak to the item? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, 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 I did type it in the side by hoping, hoping you would see it, but it, you are right. It is difficult at times trying to control everything. Um, uh, in, uh, in speaking to the draft annual report, it reflects on a year of challenges and triumphs for Council, particularly uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. The annual report details Council's achievements against its commitments and its overall performance over the last year, including financial management. The report lists Council's strategic objectives and legislative requirements and provides a transparent analysis for the community members and for the state government. The report, which is required to be lodged with the Minister for Local Government, also outlines the major achievements and milestones of the past financial year of this Council, as well measurements against Wyndham 2040 and our uh, city plan. Among them was a complex of uh, completion of a num number of major community infrastructure projects, uh, such as the construction of the $13.2 million Wanjaril Durung Centre in October 2019, being the first in Wyndham with uh, a dedicated Aboriginal community centre, an integrated family centre and neighbourhood community centre, uh, Mr Mayor. Council's commitment to enhancing neighbourhood hubs saw the completion of $2.4 million in upgrades to the Manor Lakes Community Centre, Point Cook Community Learning Centre and Tarnit Community Learning Centres. These projects are about bringing council services closer to our residents and their communities. Wyndham Parks 2021 invested $3.3 million into the upgrading of 47 parks in Wyndham this financial year to improve the accessibility, amenities and ambience of our parks and open spaces. The Truganina East uh, Family Centre, now known as Mainville, Main View, I should say, Boulevard Family Learning Centre was completed and opened and construction of the Riverdale Community Centre in Tarnit West as well to provide a wide range of community services has commenced. Master plans for Galvin Park Oval and the Truganina Sports Reserve and Passive Open Space Master Plans were also completed, as well as master plans for Windenvale North, Laurie Emmons Reserve, Homestead, uh, which is the Brookdale Road Reserve, and uh, Upper Point Cook uh, Road, West, Tarnit North, Chenside Park, Windenvale North, uh, to name a few, as I said with uh, that previously. Uh, during the pandemic, Council provided $2 million worth of grants to 285 local businesses and waived more than $1 million in fees and charges previously. Council scaled up business support services to ensure local businesses have support and assistance when they need it or when they need it most. And uh, Council has continued to work closely with uh, local service providers key agencies and the state government to ensure that we're all working together to support our community. A key focus or a key area of focus for us during the pandemic has been food relief, with many community uh, members uh, without access to fresh food due to restric restrictions, financial difficulty or due to isolation. And uh, Mr Mayor, Council has also advocated uh, for a range of service and infrastructure upgrades over the past 12 months to both the federal and state governments, from your schools to roads, trains, uh, train stations, I should say, and car parking, kindergarten uh, garden funding, uh, pokies reform and against the proposed dumping of contaminated soil from the Westgate Tunnel project at a Windenvale stabling site. In closing, Mr Mayor, I thank all uh, City of Windham staff, all government uh, partners, business, and community members for their efforts in the past financial year. And uh, as uh, a number of councillors uh, mentioned when uh, speaking on the last item, uh, over those four years and, and the last year, it has been a team effort. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Maynard. Okay, Councillor Ahn, you were next. Three minutes. Thank you. 
Thank you, Ms. May. Uh, the, the last two months have been a challenging for Wyndham with a continuing influx of new residents and the COVID-19 pandemic. The report provides a comprehensive overview of our performance. There are a couple of projects that I would like to highlight. Uh, besides those, you know, over 100 million uh, investment in infrastructure, we also you know, uh, adopted the social and economic inclusion framework. So to open up pathways for local people to fully participate in work and community life. Council also delivered the first year of the Winnovation Plan with a suite of programs, including the Winnovation Summit, Master Class, Industry Roundtable, Business Lunch, and the Pitch Competition. And we have finalized a number of important plans and strategies that will shape our direction in the coming years. And as my fellow councillor, uh, Peter Mina, just mentioned that I'm also pleased that council has continued to advocate on many very important issues and service gaps in impacting our community, from schools to kindergarten funding, transport, buses, and local jobs. And I would also like to thank all my fellow councillors and the staff for all the work on those projects and many more in, during the past two months. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Ahn. Councillor Shaw, your next three minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I think that was uh, well spoken, Councillor Maynard, and well summarised in terms of um, the annual report and the number of achievements that we've made um, this uh, financial year. Uh, there is a summary on some of the work we have done during COVID, and I won't go over all of that, but I think it is worth noting at the beginning of August, and Councillor Maynard touched on this, um, through our community kitchen at the Encore Centre, at the beginning of August, we had produced 11,100 meals for distribution and 1,700 food hampers have been delivered uh, throughout Wyndham, which I think is an absolutely fantastic effort um, during COVID and, and some of the ways that we've been supporting people in our community during this very difficult time. I think there are other, some other achievements worth highlighting. Our Wyndham Parks 2021 program and this financial year we invested another $3.3 million into upgrading 47 uh, of our parks, which I think is another fantastic effort um, in terms of the investment we've made from a dollar perspective, but the work that goes into it uh, with our council staff have done an amazing job. Another one for me um, in terms of a highlight, in terms of the work we've done is our youth survey 2020, an important um, cohort in our community. And we had nearly 11, oh, sorry, 1,000 local young people between the ages of 12 and 25 provide feedback, which will help shape youth programs and services for the next uh, council term. And I think that's actually terrific. Peter's mentioned the Wangarul Durong Centre, which was completed in October 2019. Uh, and also another highlight, I think, is the significant planning that we have undertaken to inform council's response to three-year-old kinder reform, a really important piece of work that we've undertaken this financial year for this council and obviously for our community. I agree with Council Lan. great work on the Schools for Wyndham and the I Love Kinder campaigns. These have been strong advocacy campaigns for our community and, and two campaigns that we've actually maintained over the last four years. And I think we've had um, a lot of uh, good results. Um, we, we'd like more schools and we'd like to see more funding for kinder, but I think um, we've stayed at it and I think that will continue, I hope, into the next council term. Innovation um, and the Innovation uh, Pilot Hub, I think uh, another couple worth highlighting this year. And finally, I think it is worth Remembering the council has invested this council term $424 million in infrastructure development. This is the highest investment in capital works um, of any council term and we've achieved a lot over these last four years and it's not just highlighted in this annual report, you'll see them through other annual reports as well. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank my councillor colleagues, our CEO, our executive team and all of our council staff. You've been absolutely amazing these last four years and we could not have achieved all of this without working together. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much, councillor Shaw. Okay, councillor Khan, your next three minutes. Thanks. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Look, I'd just like to say that uh, it has been a very long journey in particularly last term, I think we achieved quite a lot, and as my fellow council have spoken about it. Uh, I'd just like to say that to what I have noticed in the last term, I was being always having a chat with CEO and I've been advocate, advocating how important it is to have public part partnership. Now, the Wyndham have trialled the partnership, which is 12 storeys, 150 bad holiday in hotel, and which is about nearly completing. That is a great an initiative of the council term, we have seen it, and it's a great achievement for the old uh, people behind the staff, the councillors, and everybody who worked behind the scene. Now, when there was a, also been highlighted as a solar city project, which installation of the solar uh, photo photoelectric panels, which is to the 13 building of the across the council, that shows that how much we cared about the the green and how much we cared about that you know the car, carbon emission. So this is one of those things to me that Wyndham City Council have been a proud. And as other the development have been mentioned, this $30 million project, which is part of the CBD with the city centre transformation into the recreation and event hub, it was, it was a good thing to do it. And Mr. Mayor, now that uh, during the COVID-19, as we all know that now the $2 million worth of grant been given to 285 local businesses. And that businesses, of course, range small, medium, and, and, and a bit of a, a large. And this is something to show that, and over, we waived a million dollar in fees and charges. Mr. Mayor, that we also have worked among the officers and councillors. We have given $100 off, $100 off to everyone after which impacted after uh, COVID-19 and, and being on a job keeper and $50 for the pensioners. Things like this is definitely have shaken up our, 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 our balance sheet, but can we say that Mr. Mayor, is, it, this is a highlight of this strong and visionary council, and that will not be achieved without just the one vision of the one council is being a collective and $100 for giving a job keeper and $50 pensioners. Some of those councils didn't support it. We always have differences, but the good thing about the end of the day, we all work in a team and it's been a positive outcome for the entire council. Otherwise, we would be like not seeing or supporting the community. Also, though, Mr. Mayor, $117.6 million capital work spent to improve a roads, footpath cycle. Can I also say, Mr. Mayor, yes, the number of people do make complain about the footpaths, the grass has gone up, and, you know, including myself, I, I've, I've said on Facebook, but can I also say that this is a true, though, a council being a very large and big and it's need a lot of staff, need a lot of resources. Do the COVID-19 things being affected? We'll get on the job right. and things will get better. So this is the some of those things. Now, Councillor Khan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Look, I know that it was discussing, I was, I was talking about that how big and important this council is, a growing council, but the council staff and CEO and then your leadership, Mr. Mayor, that this year has been outstanding and we could, and we have, we have worked hard to deliver this project. It won't be delivered without a everyone's support, including a, I would like to say thank you for everyone because this is a pretty much last meeting for us for the council, the CEO, and the staff. And uh, yeah, this is Mr. Mayor. We'll be supporting the annual report. Excellent. Thank you very much, Councillor Khan. Uh, Councillor Villa Gonzale, you have three minutes. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to say that uh, this council has achieved a lot, especially this year. And uh, it's all a team effort. And I'd like to thank my fellow councillors for a wonderful time this year and the last three years, the other three years as well. And I thank uh, our CEO and our uh, the, the executive, executive and the staff. Thank you very much. And uh, look forward to uh, seeing more achievements for this council in the next term. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Villa Gonzalo. All right, uh, that's it. So we'll proceed to a vote. Uh, Councillor Ahn. And you're on mute. I assume that was four. Yes? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Khan, this is your final vote. How do you wish to cast it? Thank you, Mr Mayor. In favour, I'm proud to be cast. It would do the right Very thing. Very good. Okay, <laughs> Councillor Villa Gonzalo. In favour, Mr Mayor. Excellent. I'm also in favour. Councillor Shaw. In favour. Thank you, Councillor Marcus. In favour. Councillor Maynard. Four. Oh. Excellent. Okay, that item has passed. 
Okay, bear with me. We'll go through again. Item 7, nil. 8, nil. 9, nil. We've got the answer in relation to questions with notice. Uh, item 11, councillor delegates reports are nil. Item 12, urgent business is nil, as is confidential business for item 13. Before we close the meeting, I will make some brief remarks myself, uh, given that uh, this is not an opportunity you get to take as the chair and the mayor, but you can do it in the final meeting, uh, most uh, in, in terms of the, the term, not uh, just uh, as the mayor. Uh, I just want to also put on the record uh, my thanks uh, to uh, the CEO and the ELT team, the executive leadership team, for not just an incredible year, but an incredible term. Uh, there's been a lot done uh, and uh, I think each of us have given a great example of the types of achievements that have been made and as many have pointed out, uh, particularly in a councillor context, uh, we're elected as individuals but we must work together as a team and I think that that has certainly been found strongly uh, but most importantly uh, from a workplace culture perspective right down into a councillor dynamic. Uh, I want to also put on the record my absolute thanks to the Councillor and Mayor office, uh, particularly uh, Xavier in that office. Uh, an incredible amount of work has been done this year. Uh, one of the one of many people that were put through the hard yards in 2020. None of us expected a pandemic. None of us expected to be the number one hotspot in the country, and all the pressure that came with that, both in the context of the organisation but also the leadership that was required throughout that year. Uh, and I'm absolutely grateful for the work that he has done, as well as the councillor office uh, for all of us over the course of this year and what has been undoubtedly a very, very uh, difficult year. I also wanna put on the record my thanks to Adam Saban uh, from Media and Comms, uh, who equally has done a phenomenal amount of work in assisting us to get out the COVID message. Uh, but also on a personal level, uh, thank you for all the work you've done, uh, particularly on Valentine's Day, uh, which was an incredibly uh, jam-packed day, uh, as I'm sure many would know, in relation to the PFAS Soil Day. Uh, there are memories of that day I will never forget, uh, most certainly being in the Docklands office of Channel 9. And I just want to say thank you for the work you did in assisting from a media standpoint uh, that made that day go as smoothly as it possibly could under tremendous pressure. I want to put on the record my thanks to Rach Spearman for all of the work she does as well and the broader media and comms unit, particularly Fiona Hando, of course, who does a phenomenal amount of work. I also want to put on the record on a councillor level uh, my absolute thanks to uh, Councillor Marcus for allowing me uh, the opportunity to nominate and ultimately become the mayor this year. Heather, I know we've spoken so many times over the years. I thank you for your personal friendship and all the work that you have done to allow me to have this opportunity. I want to put that on the record. Uh, I want to thank Councillor Shaw for what has been an, an incredible two years, I guess, in terms of the final two years of this mayoral office. The amount of feedback that I've heard, uh, both in your term and ultimately in mine, around the changes that we continue to make, the improvements that we've been making year on year, I think says so much about what the community expect of a mayoral office and what we've been able to deliver. So I want to say thank you to you. Also want to thank councillors Villa Gonzalo and Arne as well for all of the support uh, that they have provided over the years. There's no doubt we've had a strong agenda and that is in large part based on that team dynamic that we've mentioned this evening. To Councillor Khan, thank you. Uh, all the best for your retirement. And I know that uh, whilst you may not be a councillor, I have no doubt that if I, in the event I'm returned, I'm sure you will be a resident that will talk very much about the issues at hand that the council of the next term will need to deal with. To Councillor Maynard, there's no doubt that your record in relation to sports is undeniable. Uh, and I certainly want to put on the record the time that I've had over the course of the term in working with you uh, in terms of my ward uh, to really achieve really good outcomes. I think that does deserve to be put on the public record. And overall, I just want to continue to say that we have been elected as individuals, but we have worked together as a team. And that sometimes does mean that there is conflict, but there is no doubt that every decision that we have made has always been in the best interests of the community, no matter what. 
With that in mind, uh, I want to say thank you to everyone. Have a good night and all the best uh, for the, uh, well, in the coming weeks for those that are recontesting. Thank you. The meeting is now formally closed at 7.38 p.m. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor.